Hey everybody, this is example number one for mechanics of materials covering column buckling. The problem statement that we have is the W8 by 31 column shown below is pinned at both ends and we need to find the largest axial load that it can support before it buckles or the steel material begins to yield. The column material is A36 steel, uh, so the yield stress is equal to 36 KSI and the modulus of elasticity for steel is equal to 29,000 KSI. Here's our W8 by 31 column. We're assuming pinned at the bottom and, uh, and at the top. It's 10 feet long, and there's no other intermediate uh, bracing in between. So the unbraced length about both axes is 10 feet. So the first thing we're going to do is get the section properties. And these properties uh, we can get from the steel manual or anywhere online as well. So the moment of inertia about the x-axis is equal to 110 inches to the fourth power. The moment of inertia about the y-axis is equal to 37.1 inches to the fourth power. The cross-sectional area is equal to 9.13 inches squared. The unbraced length about both axes is equal to 10 feet. And the effective length factor k for both axes is equal to 1.0 because it's pinned at both ends. Next, we're going to calculate the critical buckling load uh, using the Euler buckling formula. So the critical buckling load is equal to pi squared times the modulus of elasticity times the moment of inertia divided by the effective length squared. And effective length is equal to the effective length factor k times the unbraced length L. So we plug in the numbers, pi squared times 29,000 KSI times the moment of inertia. And we have two values. We have Ix and Iy. So to get the lowest critical buckling load, we're going to use the least moment of inertia. So we're going to use a smaller value. for. for uh, we're going to compare Ix and Iy and use a smaller value. So Iy is smaller. So we just use that, 37.1. And then we plug in for the effective length. So k is equal to 1 times the unbraced length, 10 feet. And also, we just have to convert it into inches, so we multiply by 12. So the critical buckling load is equal to, let me see, I made a spreadsheet for this example. So critical buckling load is equal to 737.41 kips. 737.41 kips. And this spreadsheet is available at our website at engineeringexamples.net, as well as spreadsheets for many other examples as well. So you guys can get that at our website. After this, we're going to calculate the steel yielding load. And this is the load that will cause the steel to yield in compression. So here's a formula we're using. The yield stress is equal to the yielding load divided by the cross-sectional area. So we rearrange the equation and solve for the yielding load. It's equal to the yield stress times the cross-sectional area. So 36 KSI times 9.13 inches squared. So our yielding load is equal to 328.68 kips. 328.68 kips. And lastly, we're going to compare, uh, we're going to get the governing load. And to get the governing load, we're going to compare the critical buckling load and the steel yielding load. And the minimum of this value will be the governing load for our case. So we compare, we go to our critical buckling load is 737.41. Our yielding load is 328.68. So PY is smaller. So this is our governing load, 328.68. So this tells us that this column, uh, this particular column is going to be governed by yielding and not by buckling. And this is the end of this example. Please subscribe to the channel and also visit our website at engineeringexamples.net. Thanks.